Hello and welcome back to The Note. We've had a bona fide hawkish surprise from the Federal Reserve today. They didn't raise rates, which everybody knew, but their statement was a very clear intent that they want to raise rates in December. That was not what people had been expecting. Now, perhaps the most clear line on this was that uh, a sentence that was introduced in the September meeting stating that international conditions, obviously referring primarily to China, we're putting a downward pressure on inflation. That sentence that was added and scared many people has just been removed in its entirety. It was probably a mistake to include it in the first place, misplaced candor. You also have a clear reference to uh, the belief that they're going to be raising next time by talking about specifically the factors that will uh, decide whether they move at the next meeting. This is plainly a move in a hawkish direction from the Fed very significant given that there had been dissent over the last few weeks from some Fed governors suggesting that they would be strongly opposed to a rate rise in December. It would appear from this, uh, from this statement, which only has one dissent in a hawkish direction, that that dissent has now been quashed. That at least is how the market is uh, interpreting it. This is the probability of a rate rise in December derived by Bloomberg from the Fed Fund's futures market. You can see that the chance of a rate rise having almost been discounted is now close to 50-50 once more. Moving on to the most rate sensitive markets, if we take a look at 10-year Treasury yields, a big jump when the Fed announced and most of that gain in yields was held on to, plainly interpreting this hawkishly. Then if we take a look at the dollar, the dollar index uh, against a weighted average of big trading partners really leapt after this announcement and uh, held on to those gains. The, the strong dollar in itself will have a tightening effect on monetary policy on uh, the US economy. What's interesting, however, is if we now take a look at the stock market. This is the S&P 500. It had had a good day, thanks largely to some earnings. It gave up all its gains after the Fed announced. And then after that swoon, regained all of that and then some. It is now as high as it has been since before the uh, big August swoon. It's closing back in on the uh, uh, all-time high it set back in May. How do we explain this? All other indicators, high interest rates are bad for stocks. You would think they would have stayed low. A big part of this is the effect on the financials. Banks would benefit from higher rates. It makes it easier for them to uh, increase their margins. Beyond that, it would appear, if you take a look at how cyclical stocks performed, that there is at least some sense of comfort to, to be derived from the markets from the sense that at least uh, the Fed is giving them a clear direction once more and that the Fed thinks things are OK. Now, all is still subject to the data between now and then, some really bad employment data and consumer uh, consumer data, or, of course, even if the Fed isn't going to say so in as many words now, uh, a renewed sense of crisis in emerging markets, and we're not going to get a rate rise in December. But as it stands at the moment, the message that the Fed has got across is that, yes, it wants to raise in December, and the message from the stock market is that it is prepared to go along with that.